So the Sega Genesis Mini is out worldwide today, and honestly, I'm pretty excited to see the launch of this system. Of course, about a month or so ago, we talked about the Sega Genesis Mini on the channel, as I did get an early review copy of it, and I absolutely love this system. But I did say I wanted to update you guys with some more information after I played it for a while. So we're going to cover that in today's video, but also, I want to build the ultimate Sega Genesis Mini. I want to have the best Sega Genesis Mini possible. Now you might remember when the Sega Genesis Mini was first unveiled, they showed off a very cool tower of power for Sega of Japan consumers only, and I was very jealous of that. And then all of a sudden, people started getting the tower of power for the North American Sega Genesis, and I was very jealous of that. But thankfully, Sega actually sent over the tower of power for the Sega Genesis Mini over to my house, so we're definitely going to take a look at this, because I feel like this will make this the best Sega Genesis Mini possible. The superior Sega Genesis Mini. The ultimate Sega Genesis Mini. But what What's more is of course the controller with the Sega Genesis Mini. This is a three button controller and while it's a good controller for sure, some games you're going to want to use a six button controller on. Well the folks over at Retro Fighters actually sent over the Brawler Gen USB controller that works with your Sega Genesis Mini, works with your PC, and also works with your Nintendo Switch. So this is a six button controller that we're also going to take a look at it to build the best Sega Genesis Mini possible. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's take a look at the ultimate Sega Genesis Genesis Mini. Alright, so here we have the Sega Genesis Tower Mini, the tower of power, if you will, for the Sega Genesis Mini. Now, of course, this, like I said, released in Japan as well, but I always thought the North American version of the Sega Genesis was cooler, probably because that's where I lived. It also comes with an additional mini cartridge. We have a Golden Axe mini cartridge here. You can see that it comes with a Sonic the Hedgehog 1 cartridge, a Sonic & Knuckles lock-on cartridge, the 32X, and the Sega CD Model 1. I really don't want to open this because I think it's so cool but obviously we have to because we have to set it up with our Sega Genesis Mini to make it the best Sega Genesis Mini possible. So looking over at the side of it, you can see it shows you what it'll look like when it is finished and on the back as well. So very cool stuff here, but I'm definitely very excited to set my Sega Genesis Mini up with this to make it the officially the best Sega Genesis Mini in the entire universe. So let's go ahead and open this up. All right, so first off, we have the Sega CD. This is obviously the Sega CD Model 1. I was more of a fan of the Sega CD Model 2 because it had an eject button on the Sega CD Model 1 and the disc tray would come out, whereas it had a top-down flap for the Sega CD Model 2, and it made it a little bit more efficient and it made it a little bit less prone to breaking. But as you can see, this looks fantastic. So let's go ahead and plug it in to our Sega Genesis Mini. All right, so we put the Sega Genesis Mini on top of the Sega CD. CD. Now let's go ahead and see if we can play a game on our Sega CD and we'll go ahead and put Star Wars Rebel Assault here for the Sega CD. All right, doesn't seem to be playing the CD games, but you know what? That's okay. It still looks really good. But yeah, you know, the Sega CD was a super cool thing. I really enjoyed the Sega CD. I have a Sega CD X, which allows me to play my Sega CD games. So the first step in the Tower of Power for the Ultimate Sega Genesis Mini is complete, but it's just the first step. Next up, we of course have the 32X, or as I like to call it, the 32Sex. A fine system, you know, it gets such a bad rap, that's probably why I'm writing a book on it. Yes, the book is still coming along, don't you worry. But I love the 32X, there were so many cool games for it. Games that obviously couldn't be done for the Sega Genesis. So we're going to plug in our 32X right onto the top here of our Sega Genesis, as the Sega Genesis Mini does have a uh, cartridge slot, but it was just for show and for things like this, for giant Sega man children who want to relive their childhood. So yes, now we have the 32X on there. Look at this, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. People say, oh, it looks like a toilet. It doesn't look like a toilet. It looks majestic. It looks absolutely fantastic. Now let's try to put a Sega 32X cartridge in there. Get in there, Knuckles, you son of a bitch. All right, so we can't, we can't fit the 32X cartridge in there. Would have been nice to play some Knuckles Chaotic, but hey, we're going to have to wait. But now we are still not done with the tower because we need another piece that goes into it. Next up, we have Sonic and Knuckles. Of course, this game featured lock-on technology so that you could basically have your Sonic and Knuckles and play as Knuckles in Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 to really sort of add some more value to those games. Of course, we have to open up the Sonic and Knuckles cartridge so that we can put it in there properly. So now we have that in there, slides right in. I will say it doesn't really stick in all that great. There's no real sort of click that makes it feel like it's in there. But yeah, it is in there. And now the tower is looking absolutely fantastic. But we need the top piece of the tower. We need the top of the tower, the top of the mountain, if you will. 
And the top piece, of course, is going to be a Sonic the Hedgehog game with Sonic the Hedgehog 1. Now, what's kind of interesting about this is Sonic the Hedgehog 1 actually didn't really do anything with Sonic and Knuckles. It was Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 that you would use to play um, as Knuckles in those games. So, yeah, you know, it would have been cool if they would have done Sonic 2 maybe instead, but I get it, you know, obviously Sonic the Hedgehog was a lot of people's first Sega Genesis game. So let's go ahead and put this in the top of the tower and then revel in the greatness that is the Tower of Power for the Sega Genesis Mini. Folks, I have been to the top of the mountain and it, it is glorious. Like, look at how awesome this looks. Now, it doesn't look like Sega is actually going to be selling these. They only were available to like influencers and stuff. So that kind of sucks in my opinion because I would actually like to have a second one of these, but this is just absolutely gorgeous. Like, I just love the aesthetic of it, the attention to detail, and just the fact that Sega actually made this a thing. Like, it's so random, it's so out of left field, it's very tongue in cheek, but it's absolutely awesome. And I am so grateful that Sega sent this over because this is obviously now the ultimate Sega Genesis Mini, but we still got to talk about the controller because that three button controller we, we got to do something about that we've got to do something about that now the Sega Genesis Mini does come with two three button controllers and honestly they're good controllers I do enjoy using them but when you're talking about games like Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition or Eternal Champions those games require six button controllers really unless you want to do some weird stuff so of course there are the retro bit controllers that came out that are pretty much the same form factor as the Sega Genesis controller but what if you're looking for something that's a little bit different maybe something that feels a little bit more modern well that's where this the brawler gen comes in from retro fighters all right, so here is the controller, and I will say it does look kind of a bit plain Jane when you first look at it, but once you have it in your hands, it's actually pretty decent. There's actually a little bit of a weight to it. I didn't really expect that. You have the analog stick here, very smooth. I probably won't use it all that much because, I mean, we're playing Sega Genesis games. And then you have the D-pad. The D-pad definitely feels like a traditional Sega D-pad, maybe a little bit softer, which I think some people might actually like, some people might not, because like I said, it does feel a little bit softer, but I think it feels good. And then of course, you have your buttons here. You have A, B, C, X, Y, and Z. You have start and select, and then you have trigger buttons as well. So first impressions, holding it in my hand, it does feel very good. I do like the way the uh, buttons contour to your hand. There's a little ridge right here that you can sort of rest your thumb on that, um, once again, some people might not like that, but I actually kind of like that because it just feels a bit more comfortable. It's not really flush. It rises up a little bit, and I think it feels kind of nice, but of course, none of that matters if it sucks playing the actual game. So let's hook up the Sega Genesis Mini, Tower of Power, and play some games. All right, so we're at the main menu of the Sega Genesis Mini. I have been playing it quite a bit more since, of course, my initial impressions video, and I still really love this system. Um, I have heard some people like Joe from GameSack say that when they were playing World of Illusion, they noticed a little bit of an audio lag um, by a couple frames. Honestly, or maybe it was Castle of Illusion. Honestly, I'm not super familiar with those two games. All of the games that I'm very familiar with when it comes to the Sega Genesis library, I didn't notice any issues with it, but I guess that is worth mentioning mentioning that some people have noticed a little bit of audio issues, but I think if you're just a more casual Sega Genesis fan, you probably won't notice them. Everything still looks and feels really good. Of course, we have plugged in our six button controller here, so we're just sort of navigating the menu, checking out the D-pad, feels, feels pretty good, honestly. One cool thing that I wanna show you guys, though, is I didn't talk about this in my initial video because I didn't know this was a thing, but if you go and you change the language from uh, English to Japanese, something very cool happens you actually get the box arts for the Japanese versions of these games. And that's just absolutely awesome in my opinion, because some of these I've never even seen before, like this Eternal Champions, I didn't know that that's what the Japanese box art looks like. And some of these admittedly, I think are a little bit better than the North American counterparts. I think the Street Fighter version looks absolutely just way better in my opinion. Like that looks so cool. I used to actually have a poster of that in one of my old places, but a very cool thing, of course you see Vampire Killer instead of Castlevania Bloodline, so absolutely awesome. You know, I don't I don't know about the Sega, uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog box arts though. Like, I don't know, those look very weird to me. I guess just because I'm so used to the North American versions. But the cool little Easter egg there and something that I definitely think is very cool. But of course, we are talking about a controller here. So let's check out a six button game. The reason why you needed a six button controller in my opinion, and that is Street Fighter II Special Champion Edition for the Sega Genesis Mini. Now, I just plugged in this controller. You just simply plug it in and it automatically maps the buttons to your six button layout. So all the punches and all the kicks are already done for you. So I think that's very cool. 
you know, and a lot of people actually like this game a bit more than the Super Nintendo version. Me personally, I, I love both versions, but some people said, oh, well, you know, you have the turbo mode via the hyper fighting in this. It's a better version of the game. But then you got to get into the audio stuff with the game. Yeah, it really just boils down to personal preference. I love both of the games. Of course, the visuals are a little bit different as well, but let's check out this controller here. So like I said, all the buttons are automatically mapped and we're throwing Hadoukens with ease on, we are using the D-pad right now. And the D-pad, like I said, it feels very good. You know, it's a little bit softer than the standard uh, Sega Genesis controller D-pad, but I think that works. I actually kind of like the analog stick on this. It's very smooth and it actually makes it like very simplistic to pull off moves in this game. And that's one thing that I didn't expect. I didn't expect to like the analog stick on this, but I do. And I think it works like super good. And it sort of adds a different layer to a game like Street Fighter II um, Champion Edition because it, it gives you a bit more of a control thing because it's just so easy to just sit there and do the analog motion for your Street Fighter characters. But, you know, both of them work well. I think the D-pad works well. The analog stick works well. And, you know, it's a solid controller. I like the grips on it as well because it's a bit more comfortable than a standard uh, Sega Genesis controller, a bit more modern, if you will. So yeah, you know, a very cool controller. This controller is actually available um, from Ryan over at Castlemania Games. It retails for $29.99, which is a bit more than the standard Genesis controller that you can get from Retrobit. I believe the USB Retrobit is uh, $19.99. But like I said, it does have the handles. It does work with your PC and it also works with your... Uh, Nintendo Switch. And I was sitting here thinking to myself, what the hell would you use this for the Nintendo Switch for? It only has one analog stick. Are you really going to be able to do anything with this controller for the, uh, you know, Nintendo Switch? And then I remembered there's the perfect game to play this with your Nintendo Switch. And that, of course, is the Sega Genesis Classics Collection. So, yes, you can play your Sega Genesis Classics Collection via your Nintendo Switch. You will obviously have to use your USB port in order to do it, but um, you can it does have a 10 foot cable length so that's super good in my opinion you know you could sit back on the couch with this and not have to be all huddled up around your nintendo switch but i played it on the nintendo switch playing the sega genesis classics collection and honestly it works great like it definitely feels good to have a more traditional sega genesis style controller in which you can use this controller and have the six button layout like you probably want to have anyways but all in all i do like this controller i think if you're looking for something that feels modern you know the analog stick is nice and smooth the d-pad is solid the six button layout is great if you definitely want to play you know some of these six button games a bit more hardcore you definitely owe it to yourself to get one of these controllers because like i said it's a very solid controller so let's get into my final thoughts on what i think about the sega genesis tower of power the ultimate sega genesis mini and of course the retro bit controller so do I have the greatest Sega Genesis Mini in existence? I mean, yeah, yeah, I do. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, Spawnwave covered this like two days ago on his channel. He got one before you did. He even opened his up and had Sonic CD inside of it. And yes, Sonic CD is inside of the Sega CD for the Sega Genesis Mini, but I'm not opening mine because I'm not breaking mine. But does Spawnwave also have the Retro Fighter 6 button controller that makes this just so much better? No, no, he doesn't. So by default, my Sega Genesis Mini is the superior Sega Genesis Mini, the best best Sega Genesis Mini in the world, and I just absolutely love this system. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously, it was a bit silly at times, but I'm just so thrilled that Sega sent this over. If you would have told me as a kid, you know, I was such a Sega kid growing up that Sega would be sending me products to check out directly to my house because they like what I do, I would say you're absolutely crazy. So, absolutely awesome stuff here. I absolutely love this. It's so cool. I do hope that Sega ends up selling this so you guys get a chance to pick one of these up as well because it's obviously just something very iconic iconic and very cool. Like I said, if you're interested in the Retro Fighters controller for the six button that works with your Nintendo Switch and of course your Sega Genesis Mini, I will have a link to it in the description box down below to Ryan's store over at Castlemania Games. I don't get any sort of kickback or anything like that, but if you want to purchase it, that's definitely the easiest way to purchase it. So let me know in the comment section down below if you ended up picking up a Sega Genesis Mini today as the system did release today. And as always guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel. Channel. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.